There you go. Let's try now, this here. now you guys look great. There we go. There Told you, you really go. good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, give me one second here. I got a broken keyboard, so we're just going to fix the names up there. Oh, snap. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're dealing yeah. with all types of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah today is, is that day, huh? Fucking Monday. Oh, it's. It's Monday, but it's <laughs> every time I type, there's an extra character. Boom! Bootsnecker adds cat lore. I see it loud and clear. Uh, oh, you gotta put an extra space right there. Space there we go. Done. All right. Woo! All right. Wow. Let's get this shit started, go. man. Let's go. <laughs> We finally made it, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming over to the podcast show, man. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for having us. Doing great, man. Thank you for having us. No, of course. Of course, man. Thank you for you guys for even say yeah to this. You know, Not, I don't get that many yes. So, just so you know. Happy to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it was great meeting you over at Miami Music Week for the Plur Garden show, uh, Underground Loves. And um, no, and again, thank you for having us. Oh, of course, guys. So first things first, you know, before we get this shit started, give us a little bit of, um, you know, brief bio of yourselves, you know? Sure. Um, I'll start off. So my name's Cat Lord. Real name is Hayden. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I've been down here in Delray Beach since uh, 2013. Um, and um, I got into music about two two uh, two years ago during COVID. So oh. uh, when I was done with school, I re- I've used to play uh, football at uh, FAU and that was a big part of my life sports. Oh, shit. And um, that was just one of my big passions that I've had. And I've always been passionate about music. So uh, music's always been around in uh, my life, especially through the middle school days when I was all into hard style. That was like my my thing was hard style in middle school and high school. And then um, and going from there, it's turned into uh, more into the bass scene. So um, yeah, two and a half years ago during COVID, I was got my job and I really wanted to, you know, football was a big part of my life and I needed a new passion. And I've always been passionate about it. And um, and one thing led to another. I wanted to learn how to start mixing and learning how to produce. Damn, that's some fire history. God damn. Epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get to hear that that often, you know, from, you know, being a college or a footballer to, you know, base, you know, up and comer here. Nasty in the pits, that dude. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's what I love. So, I mean, football games, that's, uh, that's what I'm listening to. And uh, it's just something I've always been passionate about. I mean, that explains a lot that time I saw you. You were like, God damn, you, this big motherfucker, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It looked like Andre the Giant said, tackle me down. That's awesome. I mean, weirdly enough, you might be like the second coming of Shaq in the ADM scene. That's hilarious. Because I don't I mean, you want to be, and, you be the that best was, guy to say that. And honestly, he w- I was like, you know, Shaq is just awesome for, you know, getting into the base scene like that. And I think it's, yeah. you know, it is so cool that he's, um, you know, he's giving, he's allowing people to like, Hey, send me all your music and allow and like playing it out at, you know, major festivals and shows and growing the base scene in his, in his way. And I think that's really neat. I, I always saw Shaq as a very wholesome person, you know, and, and I feel yeah. like he has so much stupid money that he's just bored with it. And he's just like, let me just do a <laughs> couple of things. But, but even so, like, I like how he actually uses his money. It's not like most of the time you see him as like, yeah, I got all the money in the world, blah, blah. Like, no, he actually utilizes those money to help others, you mm-hmm. know, progress yeah. with the life. So that's actually very wholesome, you know. I don't know any other big guys in, in the EDM scene. Probably I've heard stories about Tiesto that he's actually pretty tall. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen him personally, you know, 3D. Uh, Zombo is actually pretty tall. Yeah. I would think he's like, what is he, like 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, yes. Yeah, he seems pretty tall. No, he's definitely tall because I've, I've I've been with him a couple of times. And yeah, like, and he, and it's funny because he's, he's the same age as me and he's taller than me. But it was like, like, God damn, dude, you British motherfucker is tall as shit, man. <laughs> but it, That's awesome. Yeah, man. So, yeah, you, you're you definitely going to be noticeable in a few years, man. You're going to be a big, tall bass producer around here. So hard to miss. Yeah. Hard to miss. Hard to miss, hard to miss man. And <laughs> Boots, uh, Bootsnake, man. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. 
Yeah, man. So um, I've been in the, I guess, the music industry for a while, always kind of dabbled in mm. uh, different genres, but didn't really find myself or my sound until I formed Boot Snake in 2019. Mm. So just uh, set some goals to get some new releases out there this year and spend more time focusing on closing out projects and keeping it, uh, you know, just under one name. And how you guys met each other, you know? Oh, I'll I'll start with that story. Oh, um, okay. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so he was actually uh, I met. He was my neighbor. So completely, you know, just you know, just a, just a normal neighbor. And I went over there just asking if he had a ladder. And he comes up to the door, and then um, you know, really, I just in reality, that's how we just became friends. And um and uh we were planning a party at at uh my my house at the time and we couldn't do it because there was there was some type of boca code that was going on that we weren't able to do it mm. and we ended up just throwing it at his house that we were able to throw a party at his house um you know back in what was it 2014 yeah yeah well, wow so, yeah no we've known each other for a little while and um he's definitely you know you know one of my really good friends and um uh, definitely uh, my mentor as well in the music industry and, um, you know, learning every single day from him in the producing world. So, um, that, that's where we kicked it off the DJing day one and, that's where that we and always just rode that, uh, that wave of the music along the way. That's actually pretty cool, man. I, I like that little bromance stories that, you know, that many people have, you know, it's not, <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me ask you, have you guys ever considered like, hey, let's just do this together as a one pin, or you guys are talked about it and you say yeah, like, I mean, you know, I'm true. in my lane and you're in your lane, you know, we let's keep it like that. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So um, we are in talks of doing a, a, a separate project, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't lifted it off the ground just yet because when we want to announce it and we want it to make sure it's right and we have all original music ready to go. So that's something that's one of our projects that we are currently working on. Right. However, when we go back to back, it's just kind of funny uh, with some of the names that we come up with. So right. if we're playing, a, you know, for instance, a house show, we go by Boots and Cats. If we uh, go, you know, just a regular bass show, mm -hmm. Puss and Boots. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's just, okay. uh, it's funny. Hey, you, you got me there. You got me there. Um, and generally speaking, and you guys do music individually. What music you actually tend to do the most when you guys are on your own child time? Straight to uh, dubstep. Angry, heavy dubstep. Really? Yeah. That tear out shit, you know, that metal stuff, the rhythm shit, you know. You, yeah, he's like really like uh, that rhythm like dubstep, you know, just some heavy chugs, a lot mm -hmm. of like hard sustains, mm -hmm. just in your face, constant energy. You know, we uh, whenever we play a show back to back, it's it's pretty nonstop. So, mm -hmm. you know, we 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 like to carry over that same emotion from the music, you know, mm -hmm. to the shows. Yeah, and basically, whenever we try to prepare, um, not prepare, but just more of like, all right, what are we going to do for this set? Um, you know, for me, I like to practice as much as I can in terms of being uncomfortable with being comfortable. Mm. So I just want to be up there and make sure it's. You know, it's going 110 miles per hour, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to put all that out there. How many how many songs, what, how many doubles, how many what, what, can, what can I do to make sure that the crowd is enjoying to the right. fullest extent within that time period? I mean, it's very interesting that you say that because you mentioned it earlier that you were into hard style, like that hardcore stuff. Like, why mm -hmm. is it that you didn't start with that when you started making music? So that's a that's a great question. Um, I wouldn't say my love for hardstyle has been taken over mm. for bass, but there's there's a new uh, you know there's a new girl in town, and that's that's my <laughs> new love. And um, you know I I think it's just something about you know the subwoofers and just like the just the bass within the constant rhythm and movement. It's just what gets me going. Now hardstyle just been around since. You know, back in middle school and high school when nobody would listen to it at my school. Right. They would actually, you know, pretty much not make fun of me, but they would say, why are you listening to 
race car music. Well, I said that's you know something that I like. Race <laughs> car music. What? Yeah. I've never heard that. That's an interesting comparison. But I, I want to hear more about that. What? <laughs> I was like, hey, this is what I like. You know, deal with it, dude. That is the first time me hearing race. What? Are they they're referring like the arcade race car racing? Yeah, they're, like, they're referring to like Gran Turismo. You remember uh, like Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo PlayStation? Yeah. Rush 64. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really don't remember like Gran Turismo playing that. They, they did. They did. Maybe maybe Need for Speed. I can believe that. <laughs> yeah. that, I'll, that I'll believe because I've heard Need for Speed playing drum and bass before. Mm -hmm. No, I, mean, I don't think it was actually on those games, but like with other, you know, People not understanding what hard style is. That's what they kind of compare it to at the time. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Such a weird comparison. I know. Yeah. I was like, really? Way out there. Like if cool, uh, race yeah, car music sounds cool. Yeah. Like if race car ra racing, you'll tell me it's like, oh, yeah, you know, country music or rock music or hip hop rap music. It's like, oh, OK. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. But <laughs> hardcore? Hard style? <laughs> Dude, you... Yo, I want to take those shrooms that you're taking, man. Because God damn, that's a wild story. That's a wild ride for me to understand. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a race car racing. I can imagine somebody from NASCAR, you know, going like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he goes a left and another left and another left. And he's getting heavy on that hard style music on his headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, man. Um, oh, man. I mean, have and and what other experiences you guys got within the industry? Because you got because you say um bootsnake bootsnake. You said that you've been in the industry for a while, and Kyle Lord, you've been for just a bit. You know, mm -hmm. you just dabbled to it. So what uh, what other stuff that you've encountered yourself in the industry that you weren't aware of, or you were aware, and then you had to mentor Kyle Lord about it. I mean, I guess I started with house music, you know, just DJing, um, always just, you know, was interested in doing mashups and making edits and um, did a lot of like circuit bending back in the day, just making weird noises mm. and incorporating that into like homemade MIDI controllers and really like different, I mean, experimental music. But uh, I grew up, you know, playing in a metal band and guitar. Oh. So eventually got, uh, found my way back to, you know, bass music and dubstep. And it's really like, you know, it's the way I describe it. It's just the, the modern day metal music. Absolutely. So, you know, that's how it all just kind of fell into place and you know, stuck to, uh, stuck to what, you know, made me feel more at home, I guess. And how you got actually got into the industry, like where do you have to go or where do you have to start? Like, how do you even know that people will know you? And I just think it's cool if like it, one person wants to listen to my song, right? But there's like all these other channels that you have to navigate to get it mm. in front of people. So whether you're, you know, putting out a release or, you know, like your own flip on SoundCloud or trying to like get it uploaded, you know, through distribution platforms, it's it's a whole nother animal. But it's really, I guess, just about networking and getting with the right people and, you know, putting it out there. You just can't uh can't just hesitate with anything it's just about getting out content consistently where did it all started like where was it that you know let's fence to this i was able to get to where i am right now and everything's a, a learning experience from day one it's 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 hard to say like you know there was ever a true turning point um but i, I will say for anyone that's trying to like break into the industry or you know make the most out of it it's uh, it's the time where you really decide that like, hey, I, I just have to call a project complete at some point in time, you know, move on to the next one, get the content out there and just constantly improve. You know, it's like your next song is always going to be better than your last. True. So just you can't just hesitate, you know, just just get it all out there. Let someone hear it. And you know, if there's a few people that like it, cool. And then if it uh, gets into the right hands and more and more people share it. You know, maybe you get lucky. And how you guys got into the the South Florida scene? Yeah, um, get into the South Florida scene. So, um, two uh, two of our friends, uh, Gabe and Kelly, they're in uh, they're Dream Takers, and um, Ooh, shout out to them. Shout out to our boys, Dream Takers. Let's go. They got their spot uh, in Forbidden Kingdom, man. That uh, proud mm -hmm. for them, man. They work very mm -hmm. hard about it. Yeah, they. They're they're awesome people and great friends. So yes, um, you know, and kind of just the, uh, um, it was more focusing on you know myself first of you know trying to build up to that point of you know when it's ready. But we 
they had a headlining show in uh, April 2021 down in Fort Lauderdale, and they asked us to come out and perform for their headlining show. And um, and that's how we started off with our first performance back to back. And it was uh, first uh, um, it was our first show to start it off. That's fucking fire. Both of you together as back to backs or individually? Yeah, that's a, we we came out swinging, man. Yeah. It was it was a back to back on the first one, and fire. you know it was a spring break in Fort Lauderdale. The, the oh. place was packed. Oh, you know it was it was a killer setup, and um, I mean, what better way to do it, you know? No, absolutely, guys. Um, and what has been so far like the experience that you've got so far right now in this industry? You know, I know you guys are started off right now since now that you guys are playing to certain shows but what has been the experience up to now you know it's been awesome i think it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. everyone kind of knows each other right no matter mm -hmm. where you are what mm -hmm. part of the country what right. part of the world everyone knows each other so it's um it's cool to be a part of just a, a community in general that you know can share something that we all love mm -hmm. and um so you know the, the impact always has always been positive you know, it's, it's awesome that whoever you're surrounding yourself with, you have something, you know, in common. So I would say it's, you know, it's, it's always been awesome. Yeah, I, I think I can definitely attest to that. And just uh, really just the surrounding people at the show is always what I love the best because everyone is so genuine and nice. And, you know, everyone's there for the same reason with the love for the music. And, um, and that's what I love about it. I, you know, could like just keep on you know, wanting the South Florida base scene to continue to grow like it's doing right now. Because yeah. I, I grew up over in Tampa. So Tampa's had a little more uh, base shows at the the amphitheater before it burned down. And now it's over at the Ritz. And yeah. Um, so and also uh, you got TK Lounge and all that over there. So um, all I could want is the base scene to continue to grow, you know, across the, you know, really across the country and um, and down here specifically. That's very interesting that you say that you're from Tampa. I actually had um, what's his name, Plasma, over here to my show. Okay, cool. So, and I mean, he's a Tampa native over there. So that's actually pretty cool that you guys are actually Floridians, real Floridians here. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fake one, man. I, I came from Arizona, but you know, I <laughs> <myself> Florida, you <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, how long have you been here in Florida? I moved here in 2012. All right, yeah, yeah, you're the, officially a Floridian. You passed the 10 that's year it, yeah, yeah, mark. It, man. The 10 <laughs> year mark, you passed yeah. it. I'm still, I'm still, I'm a fake Floridian too, you know, because I'm from Puerto Rico. I just moved here like Wait, eight, yeah. eight years ago, like back in 2014. Oh, cool, oh man, so, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, the Puerto Rican scene was kind of dull for me, and you know, I just finished college and i decided to like all right and nothing in, in here for me so i was like let me just move to miami you know and yeah. then from miami i went to uh, audio school and i finished my audio school and then i started my career here and then i just took That's up with awesome. um with working for life in color and doing some some shows here and there promoted and then i quit and then i just went straight on production and dj and now I'm doing what I love best, podcasting, interviewing people like you guys, you know? That's awesome. What um what made you get into producing and mixing? I've been DJing for over 15 years. So like oh. DJ has always been like something that was always part of me. Mm -hmm. And the EDN scene was about is on a was was on a rise at that time. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to play at these festivals, you know. EDC Puerto Rico. I went there. I was just blown away. And I said to myself, mm -hmm. I want to be there. I want to perform in there. Yeah. You know, I had a lot of people who are in the industry who mentored me and talked me through. And I asked them, like, what is it that I got to do? Let me get to it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. the, the number one answer that they say to me, the most common one, actually, is that you need to learn how to produce music. So I'm I was never a musician to begin with. I was always the DJ. That was my thing. That was it. But I never knew, learned how to music theory, never knew how to, you know, play any instruments. Probably the bass, but bass is like the most basic thing I can actually do. I can only play the most basic stuff. It's, and it's, it has to be the four chord bass, because that's the only thing I learned in, in high school. And I even that I'm pretty sure I forgot about it. So I didn't know any of it about that. So I had to learn how to do all this stuff, either self-taught or somebody 
show me the ropes here and there. And then once I got to audio school, that's where I learned immensely mm -hmm. how to how to do music theory, at least the most basic stuff of music theory and how to do an entire work session and how to sound design and all that stuff. And then, yeah. you know, on that I got that's what uh that's what I got myself into. And I said to myself like, you know, I really want to be the I follow this whole artist routine. Mm -hmm. But I'm at the time I wasn't as gifted as my boy Nitty Gritty was, is, still is. Shout out mm -hmm. to my boy. He and I graduated the same class. Um, I wasn't as gifted as him, which he already was like already on a next level, even so back then. Mm -hmm. So they gave me the options. It's like, well, what else can you do? Like, what else can are you do? Let's just say that this doesn't work out. Like, what can you do in this scene? I'm like, shit, I don't know. I've been DJing for 15 years, like for a decade. That's like as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And that's where they tell me, it's like, oh, well, can you set up boards? Can you set up speakers? Can you set up this and that? I was like, hell yeah, that's walk on water on me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then you can be an audio visual technician. And then I worked in the Clevelander. I worked for freelance um, on various festivals here in South Florida and mm -hmm. Florida in general, to be honest. And I've done in Puerto Rico. And now I work in the uh, as a manager of what I do. Audio visual awesome. technician. And oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I, and I love my job. I really do. I still do music on the side, but see, that's the thing. I wasn't as passionate as I was at the beginning. And I never had that, you know, that full edge drive or never had the time to get that drive in because I was basically overwhelmed or overworked mm -hmm. to the point that, I, like, I've been squeezed out out of, out of to the to my limits, literally in my old job in the Clevelander, which I tell everybody is like it's the shittiest job ever. Do not go work there at yeah. all. Like, do not go work there, fucking Clevelander. Um, but I got it. I learned. I learned a lot from it, and I said myself is like as soon as I get out, you know, I have a better job. I have better hours, better time. I can actually do my music. And I did. I managed to pull up a couple of songs here and there, but I was arguing with myself with, a, you know, a lot of things, you know, fighting my own demons and at the same time mm -hmm. trying to fight um, my sound. Because mm -hmm. many people don't realize that for a bass producer, you need to sound unique. You need to sound diverse. You need to sound like you're the next it. You need to be the trend. You need to be the trend. Don't follow the trend. Be the trend. And mm -hmm. it's kind of hard because almost everybody has serum. So I almost everybody will start to sound the same. So go figure about that. So I had to look for ways of how to do that. And it was a, a very uphill battle to me that I got to the point that I was just um, I burned out before I even started it. And I, I was okay. very close to start. And I got burned out because I just couldn't take it. I was just very unhappy. I took it as a job. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I put so much unnecessary pressure. It, you know, it's it was, when you take the passion out of something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's you know, I, I, like I felt I, I, I did, and I, and that was the thing. I did not want to admit it. So I was kind of stubborn with that. Like I did not want to admit that. Like I'm not very good. I, like I don't see myself in this. Like no, I, I can't. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. So, so it was it was bad for me. It was bad for me until I decided like let me just take myself at a hiatus, not retire, but stand back. Yeah, just take a step back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To step back, and you know, coincidentally, COVID happened. Yeah. So yeah. that was like it. I should have that time. I should have probably take advantage. Should have have taken the advantage. Actually, make a music. Because barely anybody had any time to do anything, but I didn't because I truly found my passion and my happiness with podcasting. So when podcasting started, I I I I was like, I didn't know I was gonna enjoy this as much as I thought I would. I was just going about. If you look, if you see my initial first episodes, you'll see that most of that is just rants and talking about experiences that I've gone through over the years in the industry and exposing some of the ugly truths in the industry. I still do. 
Still do, yeah. but it's now much more brief, you know? And if anybody asks me a question, it's like, I'm pretty sure you guys got some questions for me and we can answer that a little bit later. That's all I did. I never intended to do the podcast to what it is right now, in which I'm having amazing conversations with people around the world. And, and when I say yeah. around the world, I literally mean people that are either here in the local scene, here in the state of Florida, in the in the United States, that from different parts in America, Canada, Europe. Like I got people from Czech Republic, Greece, Spain, nice. England, um, France. Like I interview four of the greatest, you know, French producers who are now up in commerce right now, like Bezo, Dr. Ushu, Alex, mm -hmm. sick guys, sick individuals, yeah. sick, amazing people, you know, I've, and I'm so proud of them, you know, and, and but I never intended to to make this podcast to be like that. It was it was it wasn't on purpose. Like I said myself, I'll probably have some guests here and there, but I never intended that like, oh, it's every week I'm having an interview with someone. That's awesome, though. No, just to yeah. see. Uh, so when it, when did you start the you wanted to get into the podcast? Like when it, when did you start all that? It, well, I had I had my like as soon as I did uh, my hiatus with uh. That was in 2020. I took I stopped mm -hmm. in by January. I stopped making music altogether. And I was already in like thinking about and in the words of making my podcast, like looking up designs and brands and stuff like that. Like at least I don't have money. So I'm not trying to invest some something big mm -hmm. yet because I don't know if if this fails, then you know, I don't want to feel like fuck, I wasted that all that money or that time, you know, whatever. And because I've already have more than half of the stuff that I needed to do a podcast. I was just like, I was already halfway there. I just had to invest a few hundred bucks and boom, that's it. I yeah. start my podcast. Run, run with it. Yeah, running with it. And I think I started it March. As soon as the lockdown happens and everybody's at home, that that's where I started it. I just picked up a, um, a microphone that I always had, hook it up to my interface, start recording myself, and boom, here we go. Right. Two hun hundred episodes later. Yeah, wow. dude, congrats, man. That's that's huge. Thank you, thank you. You know, and I always said myself like this, like I, I never knew that this was actually my calling call. Because they people pointed out to me like this is actually your calling call. Like everybody has their thing. I didn't even know that this was actually my yeah, thing. You found it. You I found it. it, and I'm so happy about it. And I know it's a uphill battle with me, you know, getting the attention of others and getting the exposure that it needs, you know. But I like the challenge. You know, I'm a stubborn idiot to do that. The important thing is, is like because this is something that Ten Graphs um, has asked me before. Shout out to Mark, man. Um, he has asked me, like, you know, like, you, you you, don't do this for the money, right? And I'm like, I never planned to do this for the money or for the for the exposure yeah. or for the or for the viewership. Like, I could give a shit about it. Like, like if you see my my account, it's not that big. It's not as big as other podcasts in the EDN scene. But I can tell you it's not as interest as other EDNs podcast mm -hmm. not not to throw shades on anybody not starting a podcast war here <laughs> <laughs> but but i do something that not many of these podcasters do and it's bringing the little guy here all i see is established artists who have already made it what about the people who are struggling to make it what about the the little ones the ones that actually do listen to your show what about those guys what about those guys that are they're telling you like, well, man, I'm trying to make it, man. It's not easy. See, that's what separates my podcast from the rest of them because they have a like a limit or not limit, but a, like a, what's the app? What's the word? Just FYI, guys, English right. is not my first language. So you, you no, know, you're, you're perfectly good, fine. You're I'm good. trying to think of which uh, word. Good. Everybody like has a criteria. Yeah, let's go with Expectation, that. Expectation, criteria, or like... Something around, something like everybody has their yeah. own criteria in which like, okay, I'm interviewing, you know, people with blue check marks. Yeah, yeah. Right. Me, I interview anybody. That's my criteria. Mm -hmm. I don't just decide. Well, I do decide, but I just, I don't go about it like... Oh, only you will be interviewed and not not you guys. I don't care about you guys. Now, I only care about you. I don't go about it like that. No, I go about everyone, regardless whether you have a blue checker mark or not, whether, regardless if you have 100 followers or 10,000 followers. That does not bother me at all. 
I just want to hear your experience and your and your talent. Mm -hmm. That's all that what it cares. And if you got the talent, man, and I'll do my very best to put you out there in the mat, you know, because nice, man. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And I mean, that goes a long way and it just shows, you know, what kind of person you are as well that, hey, you're, you know, you were a producer and DJ yourself and you know how how it is. And yeah. you're you're going out of your way to make sure that everyone has a shot of getting that, um, you know, getting that opportunity to be on a podcast, to be able to you know yeah. showcase where they're from, who they are and how, you know, what music they, they work with. So I, I think, uh, you know, no, it's, it really is kudos to you for, you know, with the opportunity of, you know, allowing, you know, people all around the world to to showcase their talent and their sure. and who they are, who they are. And, um, you know, I think that's uh, it's only going to go a long way in this industry just because it gives everyone that 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 shot and that opportunity to be able to, you know, you know, talk about it. So it's uh, I think it's awesome, man. Thank yeah, you. Man. It's, a, it's a grind. It's a grind. No, it's definitely a grind. It's, it, it's definitely, it's not the same as um, promoting a podcast. It's definitely not the same as promoting yourself as an artist. Because uh, yourself as an artist, it's easy because all you got to do is just post out your music. Someone will hear it. Someone will listen and they'll fuck with it. It's only three minutes long, average, give or take. If they fuck with it, they're going to share the blab. Do their thing. Yeah. Now, a podcast, however, it's much more intellectual. It's much more of a learning curve. And it's like usually the conversations last from an hour to two hours or so, you know, and sometimes I have to divide the episodes so it doesn't look like very menacing. It's like, fuck this. I'm not going to not going to listen to a three hour conversation with with so and so or oh, versus. Oh, it's a one hour conversation. All right, cool. Oh, wait a minute. There's another one. Oh, okay. Let me listen to the other hour. Mm -hmm. In reality, it's just the same episode, but it's just divided by two. Something psychologically. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, most, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know how, but that's how humans operate. So I have to try to find ways and try to be creative about it. I know, like, one of the things that, did really worked out for me was um, putting clips on TikTok and all my social medias, like mm. clips of any episode that I've done, put a bunch of clips every other day or every day. Problem is to do all this. It's just that it's fucking hard and consuming. Like people don't really realize I have a, a regular nine to five, even though it's my favorite nine to five, but mm -hmm. I'm basically the one man army in all this game. You know, like and I, like the, the editing, the clipping, the record, like just everything that goes into it. hundred, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> and I'm yeah, sure your, your job sometimes requires a little more over time as well. You know what you got to do. It's, and, and it just takes up the time because, yeah. you, you know, you set goals and deadlines for yourself or, you know, this podcast and I bet, you know, you know, some that job sometimes gets in the way or just, you know, or you guys, you know, sacrifice sleep. Like, ah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, and, you know, yeah, yeah, man, it, it's stuff like that. And and I said to myself, like, don't kill your don't overkill yourself for doing this, because remember, you're doing this to make you happy. You know, you're not mm -hmm. doing this to make anyone happy. You know, I'm pretty sure I'm making everybody happy who went into my show. Sure. That, but that that has to come along with it. You know, I'm not trying yeah. to, you know, you know, to over exert myself. And that was my problem when I was making music. Like I was uh, over exerting myself. And then when I realized that that thing was about to happen again, I completely stopped. It's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not just putting clips anymore. Like I'd rather pay somebody to do the clips because shit, after I do the whole mixing and mastering and editing on the episode, you know, mm -hmm. I had to bounce it. I had to schedule it. I had to, I have to do my own graphic design. You know, I have mm -hmm. to do my, you know, the thumbnails. I had to do the social media promos. I have to, I have to DM or email a bunch of artists and order managers to mm -hmm. ask them to come over to the show. Like I'm guys, literally I'm doing everything, even conducting and try to think of all the questions, you know, or the topics that we can talk about. Like I'm doing everything on my own. Yeah. So it's like doing that whole clip when was actually, well, everything that I said, sure, it sounds like a lot, but I was able to do it no problems whatsoever because everything else was already being made to the point that I could just do 
boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. The clips was just the only thing that was just overdoing it myself because, like, again, I, you guys may listen to this episode once. I listened to this episode three or four or five times. So after I listened to it three or four or five times after I finished, you know, doing the editing and then mixing and mastering and bouncing and whatnot, now I got to listen to it again to, to search on the clips to see which clips are important to put. The best. Yeah. And they have to be at least a good two two to three minute clips. You know, it cannot be 10 minute clips because, you know, the, the, I'm not Joe Rogan yet, you know, so <laughs> so I had to do stu short stuff that could ca captivate people's attention. They could see it for a bit, you know, they don't. And then if they want to see more then they have to go and look into it, it's again, it's just a lot of processes that I learned over the time. But it was just so much that I just feel like. Oh, fuck. And then obviously <laughs> I got I got my own personal life. You know, I, mean, I got a fiance. I got my family. And so and I got other hobbies that I tend to do. So it's like like I have to balance some of these stuff. And, you know, sometimes doing these clips was just basically killing my time. And I was like, once once I have a team, once I have a team, that's where I can just like, all right, guys, here's what you're going to do. Your job, your only job is to promote it and find a good clip and then boom. Set up the social calendar, set up the, you know, get all the marketing, done. Hands off. Let me do what I want, you know. Let's go. Do Let's all go. that. Unload it. Unload <laughs> it. Unload it. <laughs> Unload the clip. Yeah. Yeah. My only, my only problem that I have in my head should be only getting the people over to my show. That should be the yeah. only thing. Everything else, like, no, nah, no, nah, guys, you got this. You got this. Once I get there, we're getting there. What about yeah, little? There. Get in there. We're in there. <laughs> I'm waiting it upward and one day at a time, you know, got to thankful for life and just keep on going. Absolutely. Keep it rolling. Absolutely, man. So, so yeah, guys, that was pretty much my little brief of why I got myself into where I am right now, you know? Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and this is something that I always tend to tell everybody. It's like, you know, if you have a passion and you're very happy about it, go follow it. Yeah, go do it. If that shit makes you happy, nothing else matters. Yeah, I got two things that make me happy: bass music and my cats. So those are the two so things that cats uh, and dubstep. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so I'll take it for granted that say that you have a lot of cats. All right. So, all right. All right. So I have. <laughs> okay. So somebody uh, told this to me at a, at a at a show. And then it just made me just rethink everything. And then he's like, how many cats do you have? And I said, well, I have two. I adopted two cats. And he said, you can't be king, uh, Lord, Lord of the cats with two. You got to have a minimum of three. And I was like, oh, uh, here we go. Almost, oh, thought, honestly, almost thought about adopting another yeah. cat right then and there. So I think within the next uh, year or so, I'll get another cat, maybe another, and then end up having like five cats. We'll see what happens. So, hey. Uh, well, here's the a thing. I take gang of cats. Man. Yeah, I mean, I got uh, my one cat. Her name is Skittles. My other one is named Rue, like named after like the first step of making gumbo. So it's like R O U X. And then, um, and he's he's actually more like a dog. I like take him on walks, like around the neighborhood. Yeah. And he just uh, he sniffs other dogs. He like goes up to other people. He's just just uh, cat super chill. Very super chill. Damn. It's very rare to hear that, especially on cats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's two completely opposite cats, but yeah. uh, he's, uh, and then the other one just likes to, you know, hang out. So. So that's why it came, that's why your name come from, from because you love cats? So there's uh, two ways. So I used to play a board game with my dad back in, uh, when I was younger, mm. and it was uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And oh, there wow. Named, there was a the character named from Dungeons and Dragons named Cat Lord. So I took the combination of that with what would be something that would fit me and all of my friends, all of my family members know that I love cats. And I just took the combination of, you know, the concept from Dungeons and Dragons with Cat Lord and really what everyone would know, you know, just knows me by. And I said, you know, I went ahead and looked it up. Nobody had the name. And I said, that's going to be it. And it took me a while to figure out what would be the best fitting for mm -hmm. me. And that's how I came up with Cat Lord. And I guess Boot Snake came from because you like snakes. <laughs> yeah, <just> pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> I, I love boots. I love snakes. Actually, I hate snakes. It's like one of my least favorite. Um, <laughs> I, the irony. The irony. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, you know, it's just uh, about bringing on that passion that we talked about, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that is one form of passion. Yeah. I don't, I don't mess with snakes, man. Yeah. That's, that's why he makes angry music. That's right. Oh, that's what's up. Well, funny, f- fun fact. It's all the snakes out of Florida. Have you dealt with snakes before? Because I have. Oh, yeah, man. Arizona, we have. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You're from Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. No I, joke. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. sorry. No, well, I deal with snakes every day at work. They just passed by like it was nothing. I was like, good uh, morning to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that. no, yeah. no. There's literally wildlife at my job, literally, as uh, for workers, students, professors, it don't matter. Like there's wildlife. I've seen snakes like it was nothing. Giant lizards, iguanas, you know, mm-hmm. ducks, obviously. All sorts of pets and all sorts of wildlife animals. I see. I even seen fucking fish jumping off the waters. You know, I, I've still were fucking free willy. <laughs> when I when I was over at FAU, we had uh, raccoons everywhere, and they looked like cats. They oh, really looked like cats, but they traveled in packs. Oh, so you would walk down this hallway, and it would connect you from one side of the campus to the other. And if they all looked at you, you gotta you gotta you gotta be careful. They'll, they'll start chasing you, and they mm. they, were, they were vicious. Those raccoons, man. Yeah, and, and and we can't even do anything about it. I was like, we go to jail if no. we touch that. I'm like, oh yeah, like what the fuck? You're telling me that a fucking wild <laughs> a- animal bites me, and I may potentially die. Get, yeah, get rabies potentially, potentially, and I end up going to federal prison. Huh? Nani? Self defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my that's that's gotta be my claim. No, it was fucking self defense. Motherfucker came across me and I, I punched it in the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much more to say. You can see me in the cameras, yeah. me jumping around all, all over it, but you know, that's just pretty much you're gonna get me. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, they have those fucking signs in, in UM with say like you know, alleg- uh, crocodiles and alligators and snakes are all protected by federal. I'm like, so if you have like a full on, like, let's say 15 foot crocodile or alligator, just walk across campus thing is chasing after you, you, you can't do anything. No, no, nah, no, nah, you're done. <laughs> you're done. You can't outrun it. No, like, you can't. There's, there's, and you can't outswim it. <laughs> no, no, no. Say, Take my leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it. You know, it's like, oh, okay. So not only am I going to lose a leg or an arm, oh, no, I can go potentially to to prison because their excuse is like, oh, but what provoked the the animal for for it to attack you? It can't just attack out of random. I'm like, motherfucker, have you seen when sharks attack? (laughs) Do you know? Do you not know what a fucking bull shark is? A bull shark just bites you because he feels like it. It's not because you provoked it. No, he would, he. They're just fucking aggressive. That's what they are. The yeah. fuck is your argument? Oh, you provoked the crocodile. I wasn't near it. I was literally walking down the street, and all of a sudden, the fucking a- a crocodile just attacking. <laughs> oh yeah, I just just ignore it. I just just ignore it. That's how it is. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, this is Florida. Yeah, this is. Yeah. I mean, what. What better place? Literally, what better place, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is so fucked uh, up, man. This is so fucked up. So let me get to some of the more needy greedy stuff that I want to ask you guys before we can wrap it up, man. Because I know we're greedy. getting a little bit short of time and I don't want you guys to, you know, to leave without it. You guys have already done your experience with music production. Now, how long does it usually take you guys to finish your music projects? For me, I'm still getting um, all of my uh, sound design um, and all that st- straight away. But I know um, if we're, if we're you, crushing like an edit, we, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I we, mean, you, you know, we'll, we'll bang them out in the session when it's pretty solid. But a few hours, yeah. it, it, it really depends on like the track, right? Mm. And how deep you want to go into it, you know, what what the uh, what the goal is. But that's where I just started kind of like creating timelines, you know, the, to get something out, like being a little bit more strategic with your time in the studio versus, you know, if you're into sound design, you can sit there and tweak the same sound, you know, for 10 hours and mm. just keep refining it and never move on. So it's, um, it's just about kind of laying out what's in front of you. You know, if you, if you build out all your samples on a sound design session and you want to load them in because you have a theme for a track, 
and you can you can kind of ride the uh the express lane yeah i was actually going to ask you guys like what is your creative process behind it it's like like what is it that you guys start when you're opening up a session like do you guys go you know by the intro we, we fire from the hip man it's like it's really it just it kind of depends what's uh going on that day like we'll just ask each other you know like uh um, right. you know for a couple like you know songs that were were into at that time you know so yesterday like we put together an edit we're like okay let's grab six tracks load them in and then see how we can remix it into you know our own edit and just mm. kind of go wild and you know literally just see what happens so um mm -hmm. you know then there's days where you just want to get weird with sound design you know just mm -hmm. see how uh see how strange it can get and like you said just try to stand out or mm -hmm. you know whether it's being right. creative in sound design or being creative in composition you know there's more than one way to stand out you know it doesn't just have to always be sound but you can be good at creating tension you know there's yeah different artists that excel in different departments that's for sure i agree i agree um and and i will say like there's this like argument or notion that a lot of people put out there you know saying like you know oh you know sound designing you know it should be the main thing i'm leaning like uh, yes or no there's there's just there's debates about it you know it all comes out of it sounds good if it sounds good you know if it's very original and it sounds good let it fly you know and when it comes to sound designing do you guys actually believe that it should be a luxury or a necessity for a producer if anyone out there that wants to get into making music or is like struggling trying to find themselves with it if you're not a good sound designer, like that's okay. There's a lot of people out mm -hmm. there that are doing the same thing that are super successful because, you know, like I said, they find themselves in like interesting composition or whatever that may be. Personally, yeah. like I like sound design. I feel mm -hmm. like that's something that really interests me, um, you know, and that's, it's just really about what you want at the end of the day. I don't think there's one right or wrong way to do music. If there's anything that dubstep taught me is like, there's really no wrong way. Right, you know, like it's like break all the rules and just like if it sounds right to you, yeah, you know, like let it happen. That's pretty good, and I I feel like yeah, that's actually a pretty good answer. As I will tell the general answer that I will tell people when it comes to sound design, like if you're a house producer, I don't think you should really matter much about sound design because most of the time house producers they only care about um using presets and having great melodies. If you got a great right. melody chords, you know. And if it sounds good, it sounds good. That's you call it a day, you know. So it's like that. There's not that much of sound to say. However, for a producer, it should be a necessity, you know, for a bass producer at least, you know, because I mean the whole concept of bass music generally goes from where bass, and there's so many genres within the bass. Like if we start like beginning, like we got the hardcore hard style, we got drum and bass break mm -hmm. beat we got dubstep we got the rhythms you get the bass house complexer we got moon button we got festival tribe hybrid tribe or experimental like it all needs bass and from that bass that's what everybody focuses on you know and mm -hmm. you should be i i wouldn't say that you should be a virtual riot good but at least you should be good enough that you know how to do things and how do you can resample stuff even if it's you know some that's already been made you should be able to know how to resample because it's it's like the most funnest way to get you know new shit out and be original you post post processing is like you know a big part of sound design you know, yeah it's like taking yeah sound and, made and then making it completely different again you know that's that's huge gotta gotta be big into the post processing for sure I agree. And are you guys like that said I'm just making dubstep or are you guys willing to try other genres when you know when you feel like it? I mean, I guess whatever comes up. Right? Yeah, I would say whatever comes up. I know we, we were working on like a Missy Elliott like re remix yeah. trap or right. trying to mess around with a couple things. Um, but primarily, you know, between that 145, 150 range of, you know, just heavy bass music is yeah, I mean, like, it's like the core of the, I guess, the the brand, so to speak. But it's good to test yourself, push your limits and try something, you know, get uncomfortable, yeah. see how you can make something new again. Do you guys believe in the concept of writer's block? Sure. Why not? Like, yeah, that, there's, there's times where you have to step away from it, right? Like, yeah. I think and what do you, and what do you guys, 
do when you got writer's block? I mean, try out something different or like see how bad I can make it sound <laughs> like sound, right? Like if you're making one and it sounds like complete trash, like yeah. see if I can ever refine it or just make it sound worse because you never know how experimental you can get, you know, just like, right. But I, I tend to, I tend to like walk away from it, you know, and not um, let myself get caught up around it and then come back into the project with the game plan for like what I want to accomplish on that session alone. And then that way, you know, if, if I'm leaving in like a good mindset, like I, I cross some stuff off, I think um, that's, that's really helpful with the, the creative process. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> just uh, take a, take a couple of days just to, you know, rethink, you know, my thought processes and, and then eventually it, it brings me back in. That's just, you know, by nature effect, it's just, you know, just something, it just goes back to the passion. Like I just, have to, you know, keep on striving to go towards, you know, some of the goals and um, desires of what I want and, you know, in this industry and, you know, keep on growing and, you know, in that way personally. Okay. Um, what has been you guys in your own personal experience, your own greatest accomplishment up to now? I think uh, I think uh, meeting Cat Lord here and like, <laughs> 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 okay, getting into okay. this base scene, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's um. It's, I brought him to the dark side. It's, it's it. That's what's straight, up. Straight to the uh, the dark side onto the base scene, man. It's it's tough. I mean, we're so fresh in the game right now that it's like sky's the limit. You know, there's there's really nothing that um that, that we're not out there to grab. But at the same time, it's like it's all out for the taking. You just have to go out there and do it. Mm hmm. I I I would say agree to the same thing. Definitely, you know, new into the industry and. Um, if you would have said two years ago that I would, you know, still be, you know, doing and all that and where, where I've got, and there's, there's a long journey ahead for, mm. you know, what is about to happen. And, um, you know, if I could say that, you know, the progression and, uh, how far I pushed myself to get to the point where I'm at, I think, uh, it's awesome. And it's just, you know, there's always room for growth. And I think that's, you know, that's what, you know, just being, you know, humble about it in the industry and, um, you know, eventually want to get to the point where I can start producing like this guy. Yeah, dude, we're um we're on the fast track and that's kind of like the whole like teamwork aspect that mm -hmm. if anyone hasn't like tested out, you know, working with someone else, I mean, you have to obviously find that vibe, but it's, it's really cool if you start kind of falling out of that creative flow or like not really into it, there's that other person that can like come through and push you for that drive and just say like, Hey, like, let's, we're going to do this, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. And like, I uh, just got to like, work out together it's killer mm -hmm. so that brings me to my uh, other question so what are you guys currently doing right now and what do you guys hope to accomplish by it we, we have some pretty killer stuff in the yeah. i would say in the works that you know, hasn't really been shared with uh you know too many people yet like we said like we got our, our project that we're going to be making a little bit more concrete to launch mm -hmm. here hopefully by the end of the year maybe early next year I'd yeah say. i would say hope our goal is to, for the end of the year to get that up and running. Mm -hmm. um, by the time next year, that's that's ready to go. Um, and we're gonna come out swinging with it. Promise yeah, you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Fucking then, um, sick. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, that's that, that's the ma our main collaboration right now is working on that while we're both giving each other feedback and um, and different things. When you know he's working on different tracks, I'll give in you know, any kind of input that I can and honest feedback is the best way to, you know, keep on growing in this industry. And that's, oh. you know, that's the only way you're able to grow, you know, amongst each other. Yeah. And if, if you haven't heard it or if anyone else hasn't listened to like one of Callard's mixes, he's one of the nastiest DJs that's out there, which isn't not oh. necessarily my strong point. So it actually like works out that like he really got me into the whole like chopping side of the business. That wasn't anything I was really into before. So you know, we're able to like bounce those uh strong points off each other that's pretty dope that's pretty dope that you guys got that camera so then you know that you guys feed out to each other's strongest points and weaknesses and then mm -hmm. can feed each other out and help each other out right there not many people does that a lot and it's awesome that you guys got each other for that you know very dope exactly yeah, man. thanks course um one more question and we can wrap it up and but before we do i started to do this not too long ago with some of the established artists and i'm gonna do it with everyone else um before we end this is there any questions or comments or concerns that you guys got 
about me that you guys want to know about that you guys weren't aware of? Like, for example, like, hey, what do you guys know? What do you know about this? How do you approach this? And what do you do this and what, that? What is something you would say like that most people don't know about you that's surprising? That I play Yu-Gi-Oh competitively. Okay. Yay! <laughs> hey, I'm Yu-Gi-Oh gang as well. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh yeah. That was that was the best, man. I growing up playing Yu-Gi-Oh, but like you were like in it, in it though. I didn't get to the competitive side, but like I thought it was pretty competitive, but I didn't get into like playing the games, like competitions and all that. So you were you were in it. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm still in it. Even to this day. Oh, you're still in it now? Yeah. That's something that oh, it's sick. that's something that many people that's don't know about it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the people who know this are probably like the few people that I've talked to or um my fiance, my family, and my yeah, that's pretty much it. Not even my friends know that I that I play uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Comparelli. Yeah, just only those that's something that if somebody asks me something that they don't know about me, like, oh yeah, I play Yu-Gi-Oh! I literally go like every Thursday, every Monday, or every certain day of the week to to these local shops, and I play there competitively. I always, you know, end up in one of the tops. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I fucking love playing the game. You know, the <laughs> stem from the from the fucking anime, and I always wanted to get there. And because I sucked back then, now I got mm -hmm. a much more better mindset. And now I'm like, oh yeah, now I'm, yeah, now I'm the right. illest. Like yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, but I'm just looking. Question for you, um, yeah. What would be, you know, what would you say to, you know, artists that are out there that, um, you know, who are trying to break into the industry and they're having a hard time trying to get their songs in front of people and they're trying mm. to submit it to different record, you know, record labels, music mm. groups. What would be some of those suggestions that you would tell them regarding, like, either not motivation but just you know being persistent and, and having that humbleness to keep on trying because you know you know things are not always going to work out according to plan but it's right. a matter of just trying to push through and get to you know where you want to go um you know in that in that world so what would you you know what kind of advice i know i asked a couple different questions in the same sentence but yeah i can answer them all and they're all they're all simultaneously answers that that will make sense once i finish finished giving you the answer like everything all comes down to that so so about the passion about making music and production you you did say something that was like yeah that's definitely one of them and it's the the persistence and the dedication the consistency mm -hmm. the hard work the patience and yes. time to do that you just have to do it you like apply it to all those things that i say it's going to make your life a bit much more simpler when you're working on a, on a passion project, you know, doesn't have to be produ producing music, but, in, but in this particular case, yes, like you apply all those things and it'll make sense because when it comes to making music and production overall, it's all about practice, to be honest. And we've talked about it a little bit earlier in our, in the session, in the interview, that you know once you make a song the next one's going to be better than the other one mm -hmm. that's how it's going to be when you're making songs like i can tell you that i have like 20 songs right now out there right but i have like at least 50 or 60 unfinished projects mm -hmm. and it's because mm -hmm. um i feel like some of those projects were not up to the standards that i believe at the time and then every time i do a, i finish a project I applied that same method that I utilized in that project and gone to the next one. And then I form default templates. Once I open my Ableton session, like instead of like taking my sweet ass time to recreate everything, I kill time by just having some defaults, you know, template. Mm -hmm. And that shit speeds up my process even quicker because all I got to do is just open up my Ableton. I already got my template, you know, kick a snare, kick a snare, a couple of, you know, channels for for uh, for sound design and whatnot. And I just go straight to the sound design and just work a simple bar loop. And then it will become a 16 and then a 32. And then from whatever I decide, like, I mix and mess. I mix while I'm making my music. Easiest way to do it as well. And you're learning about it as well. 
You're also learning the frequencies. And like I said, like that all falls in time and having to have that level of patience for you to, you know, have that shit. Because what you, when you're the way I look at it, I'm um, making music on the sessions is like you're building a a Lego. You're building a Lego form and you're putting blocks at each other to make sure that this makes sense with this, you know? Mm. And that's how I see it. I see about it. You know, if I feel like something does not make sense, then I have to revisit it. And you need to have that little patience. You can't be frustrated all the time. It gets frustrating after sometimes. It's like, why does this shit doesn't work? But it, you have to remember, like, you have to be patient. It's all going to make sense later on. And once you actually have, you know, your stuff, once you apply all this and you got your song, mix and master and ready to go, man. First thing I tell everybody is do not send demos to labels. That shit is past. That's is long the past. We don't do that shit anymore. Not at least not in today's world. Today's world is all about social media presence. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you need to have the talent. That's for sure, because that's your selling point. Otherwise, why else would you be doing it for the fame and glory and money and sets and drugs and shit? Then you're not really doing it for the right reasons. So. Definitely have that talent. So do not send demos to labels because out of the majority of the labels, eight out of 10 labels will ignore your email, will ignore your track or be sent to the spam folder. That's proven fact. Anybody can argue with me that, that what I'm saying is bullshit. That's why I say eight out of 10 because those two labels, so two out of 10, probably those labels will fuck with your music. You don't know. I didn't say all labels are like that. I say the majority of them. Right. And I have to keep that, you know, I had to keep that out because there's people that has questioned me and say like, oh, what the fuck do you know this and that? And I'm like, well, I did a little experiment. I finished a couple of songs not too long ago and I did an experiment and I sent it over to all my artist friends and they all say they're dope as fuck and shit and they're playing it. I sent it over to the labels because I didn't have a strong social media presence. The labels did not give a fuck about my songs. So, so what did I do? I sent over my songs to the artists. That's what you do. Not only would you be... Yeah, people that want to play it out. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the best way to get your music out there is literally DMing some of these artists that they're willing to listen to your songs. But you don't add, tell them it's like, hey, yo, this is my fire track. You should take a listen to it. Like, no, with good intentions, be respectful. And let them and ask them for a feedback. You know, hey, I know you're busy. I don't want to take much time, but we'll like we'll like for you to give me a feedback of this song that I just did. You know, like I got inspired by this and that. I did it like this way. Let me know if I'm off the mid scene or I need a little bit more on this and that. You'll be surprised at how many of these artists will respond to you back and they'll listen to it and they say, oh, yo, this is dope. And I feel like you should, you know, work on this section. It'll be a much more better ending and this and that or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because getting their feedback would be, you know, the best thing in starting creating that personal relationship exactly. with that artist. Exactly. And that continuity with them. So that is, you know, the biggest thing. Exactly. And once you establish that relationship, man, that guy, that guy or girl will play your music out in these festivals. And believe it or not, believe it or not, people will ask about the song they'll be like yo that one was fire like who made that did that is that an idea is that was it made by this and that's where mm -hmm. a r is are gonna answer like yo that song that you played is it yours is it your idea and be like nah man i didn't do this this was sent over by by a homie in the in the dns man and that's how they look for you you know you never look for for reps you never look for labels you never look for for uh for 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 promoters they should be the ones looking for you mm. that's how the game really really works in the perfect world mm. Perf i'm saying this in the perfect world because i did it the other way around i look for the promoters i i look for the reps i look for the labels mm -hmm. didn't work out that well you know and it was later on in my career and to now where i realized oh it was supposed to be the other way around. If I knew about this a little bit earlier in my career, I could tell you I would have never done a, I would have never become a promoter and I would have just focused on just music and that's it. I don't even bother DJing because DJ I already have it. 
It was only a matter of somebody can just book me in and I'll play it. That's it. Mm-hmm. So I should have focused 100% on my promotion. I mean, on my, on my music and let everything else speak for itself. I hope that answers your, your, your question like in a whole wholesome way. Yeah, I think it did. <laughs> Any other doubts that you guys want to ask me? very good insight. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's, I, I'm telling you, like, I know some of these true, ugly truths and some of these stuff that typically not many people will let you know about this, especially a lot of established artists don't even bother telling these stories to anybody or don't even bother mm-hmm. telling to, to the little ones, you know? Most of the time is self-pride and ego because they want that shit to themselves. They don't want anybody to... Get a, have competition and compete with against you, right? Believe it or not, that's 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 a thing. Unfortunately, no, that, and that that's no, that I think that's a hundred percent. And but I think the only way for you know whole industry to grow as a whole is you know obviously it's like you said it's not in a perfect world, but everyone drops. You know, I'm not saying anyone has an ego or anything, but everyone drops their ego and their um, yeah and all that. And, you know, bring the next person up. You know, you know, bring exactly. them on up with you. You know, because that's only going to make the community stronger. So yeah, that's it, makes it, better, it just makes it better. It exactly. Just makes it more... Exactly. And and this is something that people don't realize. Like there's enough food to eat. Like yeah, instead sure. of especially it's, at this rate with the, how this community is growing. Yeah, oh. exactly. Like every day I'm noticing that more and more like downloading tracks. It's it's super accessible and like it's at your fingertips all day. Yeah. So. And now I'm noticing that more and more producers are coming up on a rise. Before it was just like, you know, like 10 or 15 a year. Now I'm hearing like 50 or 60 new producers are coming out in a single year. I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. this is fucking fire. Awesome. Yeah. It's, and yeah, it's all about, you know, being a part of a community that we can help each other out. We can all grow together. We can all eat together. There's food for anybody. Yeah. You know, they sh- we shouldn't be sniping each other uh, like that, you know? Yeah, definitely. That's real. For sure. That's like the perfect world, you know? But I, mm-hmm. but at least I, at least there's communities. There's communities that I'm part with, you know, the Grossy Boys. Shout out to those guys. Um, That, yeah, that... We actually look out for each other. We're we look out to, as a collective and you know help each other out grow and you mm-hmm. know and any any of that of the uh, stuff that we that we should be promised is it's right there. You know, yeah, it, absolutely. It, we're we're in a music collective as well in South Florida called Alchemy Cartel. Shout out Alchemy Cartel. Yo yo. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we we send each other you know just music for honest feedback and um, and then we do we send out these edit packs. Uh, we're working on the releasing the second edit Dope. pack in early May. So, um, and then we released the the first edit pack back in February. So, um, pretty some good stuff in there. All types of genres from experimental yes. drum and bass house to dubstep. Fucking dope! I can't wait. You know, whenever you guys got something new released, send it over to me so I can listen to it. So I can help you guys share it and whatnot. Just let, hit yeah. me up in the slides, man. You already Absolutely. know. Absolutely, Boosley sure. just had a he just had a collab release with Willow on uh, Rail Breakers. Um, oh, a couple of days ago. Oh so. shit! That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Let's go. We uh, we network through a, a local collective, you know, through uh, Alchemy Cartel. So you know, it's like one of those things that I never really thought to get into. Um, you know, then you meet some people some cool people along the way like they met us at that show that we played mm-hmm. um you know ended up getting together and then uh made a made, made a banging track out of it so mm-hmm. it's awesome that's awesome to hear guys i'm proud of you keep it keep at it and don't stop guys we got the last question and we can end it right here it'll be nice and neat Let's just say that you guys are walking down the street and all of a sudden a ufo comes out of nowhere and then pops out and talks to you guys and say, yo, guys, we need your help. Because you and only you guys are the only ones that can help us out with our thing. And you'll be like, all right, though, let's go. And then it goes, all right, but before you go in, just so you know, we don't know how long it's going to take you guys to be out. So here's a piece of paper. Write free pieces of advice that you will give to someone. What are those free pieces of advice? I mean, mm. don't give up, work hard, and stay creative. For me, um, always be honest. Mm-hmm. Stay true to yourself in terms of you know what you can do and yeah. accomplish by putting your mind to it. 
And third is, you know, it's always about putting in that work. Always be putting in that work. Then we're going to steal some samples from those aliens, you know, hopefully they can say <laughs> that. <laughs> that would be super cool. Nobody else would have that. <laughs> that that could be a reward. Is right, like, I'm going to give you these three answers, but you're going to let me sample the shit out of that UFO? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, it's negotiable. It's negotiable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let her know. Hey, they need you. They need really need you. So, make make that negotiations <laughs> let's happen, man. Yeah, <laughs> let's make a deal. <laughs> take me back yeah, to your planet. Take me with you. Take me with you. We go on a vacation real yeah. quick. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> well, guys, thank you very much for coming over to the show, man. You guys are more than welcome to come here whenever you guys feel like it. Let's make one later on down the uh, down the future. Uh, before we leave, plug yourself out. Let the people know where they can follow you and what they can expect from you in the future. Absolutely. I'll start Cat Lord. You can find me at, at DJ Cat Lord on pretty much on the Twitter, Instagram and SoundCloud. Yeah, and then uh, you know you can catch uh, me on Instagram, boot.snake.music, or um, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, all, all the platforms with the tracks, and some uh, some new stuff's going to be rolling out there here pretty soon. So uh, pre-save those links, man. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you guys for coming on to the show. It's an honor and privilege. Um, thank you guys for listening and remember every week is a brand new episode with a brand new topic so always remember to like and subscribe for your weekly episodes at the Lone Wolf Podcast from youtube.com slash the Lone Wolf Podcast or lonewolfpod.com that's lone w-o-l-v pod.com when you can check all my latest episodes you can also check the audio version at SoundCloud Spotify Apple Podcasts and iHeartRadio as well at Wolves and Music or the Lone Wolf Podcast Comment down below. Let me hear your thoughts. Share your experiences. If you guys got a specific topic that you guys want me to cover, want Boot Snake and Cat Lord to cover it, please let us know in the comments down below. We'll do our best to cover it at the next episode. So thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you guys at the next one. Peace. Peace.